everyone. Uh, we've come online a few minutes early today uh, to start our carrot cake work, uh, making workshop. This is your new, uh, if you are new to this, um, every week, two o'clock, we've been doing workshops. Um, and all we ask is we will try and go to pace that you can keep up and bake along at the same time. Uh, when we get to key stages, I just ask to do um, a thumbs up just to give me an indication as to whether you're ready to move on. Um, I can't see your comments. Mr. Boozy Bakers is behind the screen and he's uh, reading them out. Uh, so if I go too fast, if you miss something, just ask. Um, and we, we do repeat quite a bit because we do appreciate, especially if you're in the kitchen with others uh, or you've got kids running in and out, that you can sometimes miss something that's said. Uh, Joanna's asked about the ingredients listing. Uh, yeah, so we listed all the ingredients on the event page. Um, I'll, I'll go through each of the ingredients and the weight as, as you need them. Um, and also to anyone who's uh, very organised, uh, I do apologise that I haven't Sue's put... Uh, that, uh, Sue's, Sue's kindly posted out the Oh, thank you, Sue, for posting the ingredients out. Uh, for anyone that's uh, looking for the following uh, workshop, we, we are doing one. Uh, it's been a very, very busy week. Um, and I just, I always check that how long it takes because when you're doing it on your own, it takes a lot, it's a lot quicker than when you're teaching uh, a f quite a few people. So, um, so I have got three workshops lined up that I'm going to be putting onto Facebook. We're going to start off with quite a simple one, uh, ingredients wise, and then the other two, you've got that bit longer to get the ingredients. So do look out for those, but let's start making a carrot cake couple of things. Ed is excited for today's cake. He's done every one so far. Oh, excellent. <laughs> and Nina says, can you make this without eggs? Uh, I don't know of an egg substitute for this. I'm not an expert um, uh, with uh, egg substitutions, I'm afraid, so it doesn't spring to mind. I'm sure if you Google, um, you could maybe find something. It te tends to be um, like vinegars and things like that that are used to... Um, and to, to bind the recipe but I, I can't tell you on this because it is a very wet mix um, so you are going to have to look that up I'm afraid or use eggs this time and then uh, make remake it uh, without them uh, when you work that one out but I'm very sorry I can't help you with that today um, right so oven temperatures have I, have I got there before anyone's asked First question just comes Yes. Just right. So it's uh, 180 or 165 per fan, uh, and I think that makes it gas mark uh, five. Um, now we're using um, two rather deep tins. We're not going to fill these, it's just that I don't have Victoria sandwich type tins. Um, I always, I always use deep ones and then fill them as I need them. So I'm using two eight inch um, cake tins. As I said, they don't need to be as deep as this. Um, if you prefer to do cupcakes, it will work for cupcakes. If you prefer to do a loaf tin, it will work for that as well. Uh, so you've got some, if you want to do a square cake, you could use a square cake. So you've got options there. Tracy's asked, it says we need 350 ml of vegetable oil, is that correct? It is, yeah. We've done, so, so this is um, a recipe that I've used over and over and over again. Um, and um, my mum was quite alarmed by uh, some of the ingredients um, and worried that there was too much sugar or too much oil. Now this has always worked for me, um, but there are a lot of variations with carrot cakes uh, we've found. And I also have to thank my mum for making uh, the carrot cake that was on uh, the event page. Uh, I didn't make it this week. I was very busy and I had one hand out of action a bit, uh, so it's making me slower. So my mum actually took on making that. So well done, mum, because that was a fantastic looking cake. Uh, right, so my cake tins, I've just um, greased those already. So please make sure, uh, just so that it's ready and prepared, um, that whatever you're using, unless it's of course cupcakes, make sure if you're using a tin um, that you grease it with just a bit of um, marge or oil or butter. And then um, I'm just going to line mine with a circle of baking parchment, uh, just to make sure it doesn't stick to the bottom. You don't have to do this. Some people will sift some flour into the base to stop it from sticking, but I just like to use a little bit of baking parchment. Uh, Mark has asked, can you use one deep cake tin and then slice the cake in half? Um, 
If you only have one, yes, um, but you are going to have to um, watch your baking times later because obviously it's got to, it's got to cook through a denser cake, a deeper cake. Um, so I would probably say yes, do that and then reduce the temperature by a few degrees and then cook it for longer. Um, and you're just going to do the same as it's the rest of us with just testing it before you bring it out. And Jill is saying, is seven inch tins okay? Yeah, absolutely fine. Yeah, don't worry if you don't have an eight inch. I think when you start to go to six inch, um, it, uh, is it Mark who said about using a, doing deeper? You'll end up with deeper cakes. So the deeper it is, you've just got to make sure that it's cooked all the way through. Right then. Are we ready to get going? So for a lot of you, you're going to have already done this. Uh, and I do apologize, but I didn't get the chance to earlier. Um, but for those of you like me, that's just grabbed your carrots out the fridge. Um, you're going to need for this recipe, 350 grams of shredded carrot. Now I'm going to use it on a finer. I'm not going to use the big one that I use for cheddar cheese. I'm going to use it on a slightly finer one because that's how I like my carrot cakes. Um, and then you're going to need to grate all this. Now I'm going to do it quite fast. Um, I've weighed out a tiny bit more because I know that I'm going to get to the end and I'm not going to be able to use the end. Um, so uh, I'm going to do this fast, but if you've got any questions, please do get them coming in. And I'm sorry for the noise if I'm a bit too noisy. It's not my favourite job. Mr Boozy Bakers will tell you how much I'm not a fan of doing this. This is going to be when I wish I had done this earlier. Um, yeah, you'll be fine. If anything, just reduce your oil a little bit. So I should get a mixer for this, really, shouldn't I? And Mary said it's 350 grams of peeled carrots. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I've, um, it's 350 grams that you want to have ready in a bowl. Uh, so I've weighed out just over that. Mine are peeled, but I know when I get to the end of this, I'm going to have a bit left over. So I've weighed out just that bit more to allow for that. Jess, yes, you can use olive oil. Yeah. And uh, Jill, the oven temperature's at 180 degrees. On a fan oven, yeah? Uh, 165 for a fan oven. 165 for a fan oven. And that will be gas mark 4. There you go, gas mark 4. We're getting there, guys. Who else hasn't actually pre grated, or is it just me? Am I the odd one out today? Anyone else grating? I'm on my own, aren't I? Your mum's showing up and saying that her machine has a grater attachment. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Boozy Bakers, can I have a machine that grates carrot? Uh, Ed, yes, the, these carrots are peeled. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've already peeled them. I've chopped the ends off. Um, so I tried to be as organised as I could, but we've done had big cakes today, cupcakes, cream teas. I've made marshmallows because we made a load of marshmallows in the week, put them on the, on the shop and they literally sold out in five minutes. So we've been making marshmallows this morning. Uh, Briar and Sarah uh, haven't raised the yet. Oh, excellent. Uh, I'm not on my Sarah own. Sarah hates this job as well. Oh, it's the worst job. But you know what? This is the get. This is the get fit. You don't. You don't need Joe. This is every week. We're giving you some task that is kneading or grating or whisking. We're keeping you fit so you can eat cake. And Laura's uh, given a bit of extra flavour to hers by grating her thumb. Oh, nice! A bit more iron in that. Lovely. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to catch my own because I'm trying to do this as fast as I can. But we're getting there. It's amazing what being on camera does for your uh, uh, ability to grate faster. <laughs> and not complaining half as much as I usually do. <laughs> See, Mr. Busy Baker's laughing because he knows that's true. <laughs> Yeah. 
It's a bit like the, the uh, cream, isn't it? When you're trying to whip the cream, it gets passed around the table. So sorry if you're waiting and you're thinking, goodness me, the woman said grated carrots and you're all ready. I won't be too much longer. Penelope was ready. She's already got hers done. Catherine's also done hers, but also done with Laura and put a bit of her thumb in Oh it. no, oh no. You see, I'm just putting the carrot into the, uh, the flour. Fortunately, we're going to mix it all together in the end, so it doesn't matter. Right, okay, last one, nearly there. And you could always buy just grated carrots. You can, yeah, yeah, I could. A bit more expensive, though. It does. So you could try doing this with different veggies as well. I think courgette you can do with this quite nicely. You could do a mixture. Oh, and I do promise you, I will be putting up your pictures of the lemon meringue pie shortly. Um, we've just had to take a little bit of a, not a breather, just had to just kind of, we've had a lot on this week and uh, just having to make sure that we got a bit of downtime as well. But it will all happen, the pictures will go on and, uh, and all the other uh, workshops. You'll be so impressed because I've got three lined up for you guys. Carrot, uh, they'll pour yourself a gin while you wait. Oh, that's a great <laughs> idea. See, we, we pre poured the gin. Yeah, we, we got our priorities. <laughs> well, I would say wrong, but right? I have a nice Hendrix gin to my side, but my carrots weren't grated. And Hannah says, Paul, get this great new chocolate cake. Mmm, it's nice, a nice moisture. Right. Nearly there. I think I've said that a number of times, but. Almost. We've got a shout out to Georgia and Isla, um, the rain and pulling. Hiya! <laughs> Bit of family baking going on there. So uh, I know I've been teasing you all with a recipe book, but I have got the recipe book almost complete and it is filled with your uh, lovely photos. So once you've done the carrot cake, uh, if you would like us, uh, if you'd like to send us a photo, do let us know if we're allowed to use it in things like our cookbooks. Um, but uh, they all are, they have your names mentioned underneath as well. So you, you do get named uh, if we use your uh, pictures. Hazel's a bit late logging on, asked, what have you got in your bowl? It's just carrots. Carrot. <laughs> um, uh, you'll find that most viewers are sipping gin and tonic, whilst I am crazily grating carrots. Uh, but that's as far as we've got. So if you've joined in late, but you uh, have a bag of grated carrot in your fridge, or you we've just measured out about 350 grams of grated carrot. That will do me. Huh. <sighs> Who needs a Kenwood? There we go. Right, could I have the tea towel that's just behind you there, Mr. Breezy Baker? Because uh, I'm covered in carrot now. But Right. Up a bit. Lovely. Right, so now if you've got your grated carrot, just sip your gin. Uh, I'll put mine to one side. Um, I'm going to get a new bowl. And to that, we're going to add all the dry ingredients first. So this is where I have gone a bit um, pre-measured. Pre so we've got uh, 250 grams of self-raising flour. I'm going to sieve that in. If you don't have a sieve, don't worry, you will be fine. Um, so that's going in. Uh, to answer Fiona's question, yes, we share this straight away after the uh, workshop, so you can watch it back another time. Oh yeah, absolutely. Plus we add everything onto our YouTube channel. Please go there, all our recipes are on there, all the videos, and subscribe and view them and have a go at all of them. Yeah, and then to your 250 grams of self-raising flour, you want a teaspoon of baking powder. There we go. Louise says, can you add raisins? Yeah, you can. Yeah, I'd, uh, I'd add about 100 grams, something like that. Um, so again, we're doing all the dry ingredients at the moment. So you want, well, we're using two teaspoons of cinnamon. If you prefer to use a different spice, uh, you can. Uh, but I find that cinnamon and carrot and orange go very nicely. So that's two teaspoons of cinnamon. 
And last of all, and I will repeat this because if you're not pre-measured, I've gone very fast, um, the 400 grams of caster sugar. So all the dry ingredients. So if you need um, a recap on that, as I stir it in, we've got 250 grams of self-raising flour with a teaspoon of baking powder, uh, two teaspoons of cinnamon powder, or ground cinnamon, um, and 400 grams of caster sugar. So by the end of it, you should have a very kind of off-white powdery bowl. And just mix it all together so that when you add the liquid, it's all fully combined before you do anything else. So did I go too fast or has everyone kept up? Christina said, was that 400 grams or 350 grams of caster sugar? So I'm just checking because I know that I'm prone to uh, making a little error. Um, so it's 250 grams of self-raising flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, 400 grams of caster sugar, and two teaspoons of cinnamon. So it is a lot of sugar in this one. Yeah, that's exactly what Helen just said. It seems a lot. <laughs> it does, yeah. But actually, for an eight-inch cake, that that's quite often for a few of our recipes. That's what's put in. Not to put you off, but um, but that's why you have to do the grating so that you can uh, justify the eating. Plus the carrot is also one of your five a day. It is. Carrot is one of your five a day. And if you add an orange, it's two of your five a day. Uh, and if you put cucumber in your Hendrix, it's three. Uh, Tisha said, can she use honey as a sugar substitute? And if so, how much, please? Um, I'm sure you can. Uh, obviously, it's... Place. Yeah. Again, I haven't tried that. Some things I, I can tell you for sure how to do it. Um, yes, of course you can use honey, but you are adding um, a wet ingredient um, and obviously we've done a lot of sh sugar. So if you want it to be less sugary, um, then I would probably go for um, a couple of uh, teaspoons, uh, sorry, not te teaspoons, tablespoons of your honey uh, instead. Um, but I haven't tried it, so you're going to have to let me know how you get on with that. Um, I have been looking actually at doing um, a savoury loaf for you. I have been listening to the need for savoury and we have got a savoury workshop coming up. Um, so I would imagine it will be upon the lines of that. Um, have we got any more questions? Uh, Sue's using soft brown sugar, that's okay. That's fine, yeah. I did put on the ingredients list. If you want to use a brown sugar, that's no problem. Uh, Jamie's got a nine inch tin, will that be fine? Uh, yes, you will end up with just a shallower cake. So um, obviously where it's not as deep, um, just you might need to put it in for a few minutes less. And Sue is just checking oven temperature for the Dawn French fan club. <laughs> I don't watch that. No, but I do love Dawn French. <laughs> right. It's, it's a 180 or 165 fan or gas mark 4. Is that an actual, oh, is the fan club on or am I missing something? I have to hear more. Yeah, message me about that. Um, right, so have we got thumbs up as to all the dry ingredients? I'll do one more repeat. Uh, 250 grams of self-raising flour, a teaspoon of the baking powder, two teaspoons of cinnamon and uh, 400 grams of caster sugar. And that's all being mixed together uh, to make one kind of off-white powdery mix. We're getting lots of thumbs up. Excellent. Uh, can I use plain flour if you're on the uh, If you're going to use plain flour, you're going to have to up your um, raising agents. I would probably then use um, a couple of teaspoons of um, baking powder. Um, or if you've got bicarb, you could do uh, one of each. So, okay, right. So I'm going to put that aside. Um, and you're going to need your 350 ml of oil. Now I've used vegetable oil. You can use um, olive oil or you can use um, sunflower oil. You will get a different taste depending on what you use, but they are all fine. Um, so, uh, sorry, I think we've got a child come to the door. We've got a child come to the door. So uh, Mr. Boozy Baker will be taking your answers again, but he's just checking that they're all right. Yeah, excellent. So yeah, so you've got your oil. Yeah. Uh, and then to that, I'm going to add the four eggs. Um, we're using all of the egg. Actually, I'll use that one. And um, I'm just going to crack those into the oil. I'm careful not to get any shell. If you do end up getting any shell in your um, 
jug, uh, the easiest thing to do is to use another shell to get it back, uh, another piece of shell to get it back out. Thank you, love. This man is on fire today with his resourcefulness and uh, multitasking. There we go. So I hope you've all been enjoying the sun that we've had. I've got to admit, it's quite nice to have it a bit cooler today because um, we have got an air conditioning unit where we make a lot of um, nice chocolatey cakes, a lot of detail. Uh, but I was a bit worried about having the aircon unit um, on and the noise it makes and doing the workshop. So it's quite nice to not have to worry about that today. Uh, hey, so was it 350 for the oil? Yes, 350 of oil and four eggs. I think I did put four eggs in it, yeah. And then all I'm using is a fork just to uh, whisk that together and just make sure it's completely combined. There we go. It's quite thick now. Right. Uh, once you've got that, um, give me a thumbs up. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I did put my cinnamon in. It's all right. I'm confusing myself now. There we go. So you should have a bowl of the carrots, a bowl of dry ingredients, and a jug of wet ingredients. If you give me a thumbs up to let me know that you've got that in front of you, that would be great. Brilliant. I realise I'm making ring marks on my uh, table. Brilliant. So this is a stage that if you want to add any extras, I would do it now. We could have added it with the carrot, but that's the way I roll. Uh, so if you want to do any orange zest, I'm going to put it into the with the carrot. If you want to add any walnuts, um, you could put it in with your carrot mix or actually straight into the with the flour because it's a dry ingredient. Um, if you want to add sultanas, you can. And if you're doing something different, then you're going to have to let us know because I am intrigued as to what you'll be adding or whether you are keeping it simple today uh, with just a nice carrot cake. Um, Claire just says, is it just the eggs in the oil? Yes, four eggs in the oil and just whisk together. And Sunita asked about the butter, what's the butter for? Butter is for the buttercream. So no actual butter goes into this. So if you are um, wanting to do a dairy free, um, you could make this cake as a loaf uh, cake and, and not put any buttercream in it. Um, and, and you'd be good to do that. Uh, how much walnuts they have? So uh, you could add up to about 100 grams, depending on how nutty uh, you want your cake. Um, if you don't want it that much, just put in a little less. Uh, if you're going to use um, orange zest, I'm going to use the zest of a whole orange. Uh, I'm not adding the juice, uh, not today. I just want a little bit of the, um, uh, of the orange flavour because it's mainly about the carrot. Mary likes to add banana to a carrot cake. Ooh. And um, we've had a few people talk about other spices as well. Yeah. They would be added to the dried. Yeah. If you want to add any spices, put it in with your dried mix. That's the, the best way to do it is to keep them all separate. Uh, until you're ready to combine. Right, I think I've about zested that orange as much as it can go. Uh, Susan Mintz had mentioned the Dawn French fan club, so I'm not quite sure what happened there. <laughs> <laughs> the fan oven was 165 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> you got to love a bit of predictive text taking over, haven't you? <laughs> uh, and Tommy said, do you use a nut oil? Uh, Yes, just um, I don't use nut oils enough, but if it's the same kind of consistency as uh, your olive oil, obviously just be aware that the flavour is going to change. So if it's quite um, a strong flavoured oil, then you're going to have that flavour in your cake. Um, I don't, I haven't tested the nut oils. If someone else can help out, uh, please do, please do, but I don't use them enough. But I'm imagining um, that if it's an oil, it will work. It will just be the flavour uh, that will alter. So I've got my orange zest in with the carrots now. Uh, dry mix is the one I'm going to use to pour everything into. So I'm going to start by adding my liquid uh, to the dry mix. I'm going to pour it all in. So that's all my oil and egg going into the all the flour and dry ingredients there. 
and I'm going to uh, just uh, mix that together, fold it and uh, make sure it's all combined. I'm not worried about a little bit of um, flour showing, but uh, we just want to make sure that it's, uh, it's as combined as, so we don't have runny bits and big blocks of flour in it. Okay. Every time I fold it over, I'm getting a big puff of uh, flour, so I just want to make sure that that's all dispersed. There we go. So, so for Sean, if you're adding the walnuts up to about 100 grams is fine. And Laura says her oil and egg mix has made a pint. Is that right? I'd say about so. Yeah, I'd imagine so. Mine was quite up to the top. I'm just looking at you're where probably, it was. You're probably around about the 560 mark, so yeah. Yeah. Um, right, so the mixture at the moment, just consistency wise, uh, it will fall off the spoon, but you can see how gloopy it is. So just so you can see where you are at with that, um, it's quite a thick uh, oily mix, which is what you'd expect with that much oil in it. Now I'm going to add the carrot uh, and my orange zest. There we go. Can I give that to you, please? Okay. Thank you. Um, and now I'm just going to fold this in. Um, and it, it is the, I mean, in terms of a sponge cake, I think this is probably the weirdest one uh, looking wise, but the taste is amazing. Um, so I'm just going to fold that in, but it, you know, it's not as thin anymore. It's, um, you have to really move it around to get that carrot all combined with the mix. You want to That's show? I still want to make sure I don't tip it out the bowl. All right, yep. there we go. So it's just making sure, just fold it. So I'm taking my spoon and putting it underneath the mix and then bringing it up and over. So I'm kind of folding it over on itself uh, uh, to get all that carrot wrapped around the mix or rather the, the batter mixed around the, ca uh, wrapped around the carrot. Christine's added ground cardamom to her cake. Oh, that flavor. sounds lovely. And Anne just wants to double check. Yes, it is 400 grams of sugar, which was added. I know, I know. It sounds like a crazy amount. If you want to add less sugar, you could try that. Um, but it's um, what you end up with is kind of like a crystallised um, top when it's baked. Um, but it's, it's a very nice cake. I do. I've, I've actually made a wedding cake uh, with this um, with this recipe. There we go. So it's nicely combined now. Um, so we're going to take the tins and, uh, oh, sorry, I've got a little itch. Um, and I'm going to go half and half. So I, if you're not sure how far to fill it, um, do it bit by bit and just use your eye to work out kind of uh, where's level. So I'm gonna pour some of mine into the first one. I said you don't need tins as deep as this. Uh, a normal sandwich tin is like a Victoria sandwich tin is fine, um, but this is what I use day to day, and then make them as deep as I want. Penelope says hers is looking thicker than that. Yours is looking thicker than that. Yeah, I can show you the texture. Um, if it's looking thicker. You could try adding a bit of oil, but if you've if you've used the same quantities, I mean that's I'll show you that's. It's falling off the spoon, but it's it's quite gloopy. Um, so if yours is thicker than that, you, yeah, I suppose the only thing you do is add a bit of more oil. Um, but uh, as as long as it's you know it's roughly that kind of texture, I wouldn't worry too much. Um, so if it's asked about temperature of the oven again, so it's one eighty degrees or one six five for a fan or gas mark four. And Tiff, the butter is for the icing. Yes, yes, don't add the butter to um, your cake. We're going to make the filling next whilst that's baking. Uh, so we're not done yet, guys. Um, so that is my cake, and it's literally, it's going to about there in here. It's, it's really not very deep at all. If I tip it, I'm going to ruin my cake. So, um, But it's, it's right down um, about a third of the way up. Uh, which will allow it some room to, to rise um, and it won't go up to the top at all. Um, these are just my deep tins because I, I like having 
options uh, depending on what I'm baking. Uh, Lynn asked, did you use olive oil or vegetable oil? I use vegetable oil, but if you have olive oil, uh, you can use that. Or if you want to do a, a variety of each, then you can, uh, as long as it's about 350. Are we good? Have we got the thumbs up? Uh, Penelope said it's better now she's mixed with carrot. Oh, excellent. <laughs> yeah, you have to put the carrot in and then it's, it's nice and um, it's, I mean, it's an odd looking mix compared to your usual kind of sponge batter, um, but it, it's beautiful when cooked. So I'm going to put mine in the oven now and then we're going to come back um, and make the buttercream so that that's all ready. So I would move, I'm not that lazy, but if I move, the microphone moves and it all goes a bit pear shaped. So uh, I'm just handing these to Mr. Boozy Bakers. And remind people how long for? So sorry, that is for about around 40 minutes. Um, if you are, if you have a deeper batter, if you've used um, uh, if you've used a smaller uh, tin, um, because it's smaller, 40 minutes might still be about right. But just test it. So the way you test it is get um, something like a skewer. Um, and push it into your batter, bring it out. If it's wet, uh, leave it in for longer. Um, if it's not got anything on it, then it means that the sponge is more than likely, uh, it is done, it is baked. Uh, then the other way to test it when it comes out is to press lightly on the top. If it springs back, um, then again, it's a sign that your sponge is done. If it sinks, uh, quickly close the door and leave it in for another, and I would go five minutes intervals. Um, do you also use two loaf tins? What temperature and for how long? Um, so I would say maybe do 35 minutes and then test. Jennifer's asked, do you oil the cake liners? No, so um, I've greased the tin and then the parchment paper's just gone on the bottom, but I don't put any oil on that at all, no. And Susan and Louise are both asking about whereabouts in the oven, are they on the same um, shelf? And so, uh, We've we've got two ovens that we've actually used. Uh, if you're using one oven, um, which is normal, sorry, I hadn't considered that. Um, yeah, just put them both. If you've got the one oven, put them both in um, equidistant, so you've got enough um, uh, room for the air to get around them. Um, so make sure it's off the bottom and not too near the top. Try and keep them both about midway. Um, but obviously, and, and if you need to, depending on how your oven is. If you need to uh, move them round or turn them round or uh, swap them round, uh, then do that. But just try to work quickly so that they're not losing the heat. Um, if some people have got extra leftovers, so they've made cupcakes, how, how long would they need the cupcakes? About 20 minutes, um, maybe even 18, depending on how big. If they're muffin size, then you want um, 18 to 20 minutes. Um, and if they're little, like fairy cake size, I would say about 15 minutes. The oven temperature is 180 degrees or 165 fan oven or gas mark 4. They've been placed as central as they can in the oven on, on the same shelf if they can fit. We're lucky enough to have two ovens. If you're using smaller tins, then just reduce it by a few minutes. And if you've got a deeper cake, add a few minutes on. Uh, ours have gone in for 40 minutes and cupcakes are around about 20 minutes. Well done! The man is on fire! I am listening. <laughs> <laughs> right, so um, I'm going to give some advice on the buttercream uh, because of the temperature at the moment and also I've noticed recently the vast difference um, in cream cheeses. Um, so for the buttercream we've got icing sugar, softened butter and cream cheese. Um, what I have found is some cream cheeses are thicker than others, um, which can really affect your buttercream. So my advice is don't put everything in at once. Let's build it up because you want a nice texture that's not going to just uh, drip out the sides. You want it to be quite firm so that you can spread it. Um, so bear with me once I get my spoons. Um, so in a clean bowl, um, I've said on the ingredients, go for 150 grams of butter and 100 of cream cheese and 200 of icing sugar. Um, now, I am going to leave a little bit of the butter out and a little bit of the cream cheese out um, just so that I can top it up if it's needed, but if it's not, I don't run out. Uh, can you use mascarpone cheese? 
uh, yeah. So I've, I've left, I've left probably about 40 grams of my butter out there just so that I can add it if I want it, but I'm going to just, it's hot in here. Um, and I don't want it to be, um, a really thin buttercream. So I just think it's better, um, to build it up. And it's also then you can taste it, um, and see if it's to your liking. This isn't a science such as baking because we're not looking for a rise or uh, particularly aerated this is just uh, to flavor your cakes so do it um, as you like it um, so I'm using about I'm gonna go for about um, 80 of the cream cheese um, yeah that sounds about right so I know it's 180 grams in this pot so that's about 80 of the cream cheese um, and I've used about 110 of my butter. Um, so I've left, I've left it there so I can add to it. And I'm going to combine those. Have you got any questions? Lots. <laughs> <laughs> can you use ricotta? Uh, yeah, um, you can use different cream cheeses. Just be aware that the flavour will change. Um, but yes. Ricotta for a future workshop. Yeah, we are going to be using ricotta in a future workshop. Uh, can I use margarine instead of butter? Um, yes, you can, uh, but margarine does not set like butter, so don't use as much of it. Um, poor Pat has unfortunately forgotten today. She's joined us a bit later. We'll That's right. Later. So yes, Pat, we will share this again live. Share this on Facebook so you can follow. It yeah. Again, or please go to YouTube. And, uh, and watch the video there when we put it on there later in the week. So I'm going to show you, that is my um, butter and cream cheese and that isn't going to fall off the uh, spoon very readily. It probably will if I give it a helping hand, but that's pretty thick. Jane says, can she not use cream cheese? So Absolutely, yeah, just add a bit more butter. Um, the only reason I've said to do it bit by bit is because, I mean, we've got tons of ingredients in this kitchen but if you've bought so much of it um, I don't want you guys to run out and if you're playing with humidity um, or your cream cheese is a, is a lighter one or a different brand and it works out thicker or thinner just sometimes it's easier to do it bit by bit so that you get the right consistency at the end of it. Um, Mr Boozy Baker I've run out, oh actually don't worry I'm just going to pour it in so I'm going to just um, put in most but not all I'm leaving a little bit of my icing sugar uh, so I've probably put in about 150 of my icing sugar so Joanna yes you can use mascarpone um, your mum has kindly pointed out that garlic cream cheese is not a good idea so no don't use garlic cream cheese it might have <laughs> showed us earlier in the week probably didn't taste as nice <laughs> It, it might it might have carrot in the cake, but we don't recommend uh, garlic uh, cream cheese. No. Um, again, for for Rina, uh, yes, you can watch this video back later. We will share it onto Facebook. We'll also add it onto the YouTube later in the week, so you can follow it there too, along with all our other. Yeah, um, so the, the lemon meringue pie one, we haven't added to YouTube um, yet for two reasons. One, has been a time restraint this week. Um, and two, we're actually considering editing it because it was a very long workshop. Um, and some of you uh, were managed to complete it and much faster than others because I think um, some of us were struggling with the curd. Um, so we're going to just edit it a little bit. So to watch it, um, it's easier. Laura's asked, how much icing sugar? Uh, so 200 grams of icing sugar. Um, but as I said, just leave little bits out so you can test it. So I'm going to show you now. That's, you can see it's softened. Where I've added the icing sugar. It's now falling off the spoon. That's quite a good texture. Um, taste it. I haven't got a spoon. Before you added the icing sugar, Claire said that hers fell off the spoon. What does she add? <laughs> Um, more icing sugar. <laughs> Before the icing sugar, so I think you had the cream cheese butter. Yeah, so cream cheese, depending on what you use, can be thinner or thicker depending on the brand. So uh, if you found it was uh, quite runny, um, you might just, uh, the icing sugar should um, help absorb any of that wetness. Um, could I have a little spoon, please? Thank you. So if you don't like sweeter, um, then you don't need to put so much in. 
Um, Taste-wise, I can taste my cream cheese. Um, it, it, it is quite... Um, it is quite runny now, so I'm going to put a bit more of my icing sugar in. Um, you could also chill this whilst your uh, cake is in the oven. If you do find, particularly if you've used butter, uh, because it will set nicely, you could always chill it for a bit before putting it in the cake. Obviously don't apply it to the cake whilst the cake's still hot. Let your cake uh, cool down completely, and then this will make a really nice to fill between the two layers of sponge. Um, but I can feel the heat in the kitchen already. Um, so that's quite a nice texture. I'll show it to you in just a second, get rid of any lumps. So that's, it's being cack handed. There you go. So it's, it's a bit stiffer now that I've added the icing sugar and added the extra bit. I'm not sure it might stay. There you go, it's gonna stay. And that's the kind of consistency that I like because I know that I can spread that around the sponge um, and it's not going to drip off the end. It's not going to act like a lemon drizzle cake. Um, so that's the kind of consistency. If you find uh, that you've got a very hot kitchen at the moment, uh, especially now your oven's on, uh, as I said, put it in the fridge for a bit um, and then pull it out. You might want to put a bit of cling film over it um, just to stop it having a crust on the top. Um, and crystallizing but that's the kind of consistency that you want so that extra bit of butter um, I will put away with the rest of my butter now um, but if I found that it could it was really too stiff then I'd have added a bit more of the cream cheese and the butter but it's a taste thing because it's nothing of this is going to affect your cake other than um, either appearance if it's too runny um, and it's just taste so if you like it um, to be more sour then you know, add more of the cream cheese don't add so much of the icing sugar if you like a really sweet uh, buttercream then obviously add more sugar um, if it's thick but you don't want to add more sugar you could add a little bit of more orange zest or orange juice uh, for instance um, but that will make a really good buttercream for inside uh, your carrot cake have we got questions? Uh, yes, uh, Susan's asked why unsalted butter? I tend to use unsalted butter for most things and add my salt. So you can use salted if you want, if you want to add that kind of sweet and savoury uh, flavour. It works very well, which is why we add salt to a lot of our recipes. Uh, I just use um, unsalted. I prefer that. Uh, but that is, again, uh, up to you um, with what, what you like to use. Um, Jennifer's asked how much cream cheese please? Um, so I added to mine about 80 of the 100 I recommended. Uh, we have said 100 grams but just check your consistencies before putting all of them in. So but the quantities we suggested were 150 um, one of the butter, 100 of cream cheese and 200 of icing sugar and I've just uh, left 20 grams of the cream cheese out and about 40 of the butter out and I used all my icing sugar. Um, Christine doesn't add butter to her frosting, just, just cream cheese and icing sugar. Yeah, fair enough, go for it. I said, this is, this is what I think baking should be about, is that you have the basis of um, a recipe and then you adapt to suit you. At the end of the day, it's you that's eating it and we want you to be unique and be adventurous and try different things. So if we've tried it before or I can see that that would work, I'll happily uh, tell you. Um, and if I don't, I'd love to hear how it's worked um, because that's what, to me, that's what baking's all about is just having a go at different things and trying flavor combinations. Um, and having fun in the kitchen. Um, so please do. I mean, that's really as much as we can do for now. So you've got your cake in the oven. Um, when it comes out, I've given you the raise to test it with the, the skewer and pressing on the top. If it needs a bit longer, give it a bit longer. It should look quite um, golden on the top when it's finished. Bring it out, let it cool in the tins is my advice. Um, and then once it's completely cool, um, you can, you know, serve it up, put the buttercream in it, on it, however you like. But send us a picture. I'd love to see how they've ended up. If you're doing um, a loaf uh, cake, then of course you can pile it all up on top. Um, use a bit of orange rind or some carrot or um, walnuts, however you like to decorate. And, and yes, yeah, send us your photos because we do love to hear from you. Um, 
we wouldn't do this uh, if we didn't like the, we love to have the communication with you to hear how it's gone. Um, it's, it's what makes this fun for us. The unique variations also make great pictures for us to be able to see. Different yeah, things. yeah, it's, uh, they're wonderful. We've really enjoyed seeing what you come up with. Um, and, and I hope any kids taking part have really enjoyed doing this. And I think for us, that's where a lot of the variations have come from is that the kids won't necessarily like uh, one of the ingredients in the recipe that we've seen, so we alter it for them. Um, so uh, walnuts would not go down well in this house, uh, but, um, but carrot is fine and orange is fine, so well, that's what we do. Um, uh, Claire's just realised her cream cheese is light cream cheese, so will it ever thicken? So. Uh, yeah, so you might need a little bit more icing sugar if it's lighter cream cheese. Um, it just tends to be that bit thinner, but it's but depending on the brand they all seem because of the shop we've shopped in different places or with different wholesalers and the quality in the cream cheeses have differed and not just whether they're lighter or full fat just across the board they've all differed uh, so just add a bit more icing sugar if you need to uh, Sue's uh, put down a very good suggestion so she only had granulated sugar so she whizzed that to a bit for caster sugar and then whizzed it longer for icing sugar brilliant yeah excellent yeah, being resourceful there. Uh, Annette's saying her kitchen's are right next. <laughs> <laughs> Shows there's you. A few you bowls. <laughs> yeah, there is a few <laughs> bowls. Uh, so uh, next week, I'll give you a lowdown of what we're planning for the next few weeks, uh, and then I promise uh, we will put them up. Uh, so next week we are going to do shortbread. It's been asked for a number of times um, and it's a little bit simpler and we know that some of you guys do plan your shopping well ahead. So we've tried to keep it quite simple next week uh, so there's not too many ingredients to get hold of. We'll put a few var uh, like variations of what you could do with that. So shortbread next week. The following week we have got some olive bread that does require yeast and bread flour. You don't have to make it olive bread. You can make it a nutty loaf if you want, or a tomato, dried sun-dried tomato or something, cheese. or cheese or whatever you like. But we're going with olive because I really, really like um, olive bread. My son devours it. We went on holiday to uh, Spain and the loaves of the olive breads came out. And if he could, he would have taken a whole one. Uh, so we're going to theme it on the olive bread. But if you want a variation, then we'll put some of those up. And then, I've been umming and ahhing about this, um, but uh, we're going to do ricotta pancakes. Now, the reason I was umming and ahhing is because I was thinking, mm, is that more of a breakfast time? But I don't think you can have a bad time for pancakes. Um, and you can leave the mixture in the uh, fridge as well. So you could make yourself a couple of pancakes uh, in the workshop, and then you could put some cling film over the rest of the mix and have it for your Sunday uh, brunch. So we're going to be doing ricotta pancakes in that third week. Uh, so for anyone that's trying to plan, I promise we will have them up. Uh, I'm, we, need to, we need to make ricotta pancakes because I can't find a photo of ones we've done previously. Uh, so it's appalling, but we're going to have to have this pancakes tomorrow, Mr. Boozy Bakers. <laughs> uh, but we have got the pictures of the other lot. So I will put that up shortly. Um, please bear with me. It's been a, a really, really busy week and uh, trying really hard to keep up with everything. And we're about there, um, but the admin's just slipped a little bit. Uh, Annette, like I say, that you were loading boxes for Lush. Oh, excellent. Which ones did you have? Um, we've you, got we've lots had, of uh, love for all the workshops coming up. Excellent, good. Sorry, no, it's about. fine. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we've got uh, on the website, uh, on our online shop, we've added the aprons and we've added loaded boxes. We're very aware that a lot of our followers are not around the corner um, and don't have access to things like our cream teas and our cupcakes. Uh, so we added loaded boxes because they are so delicious. They're everything and more that our cupcakes have. Uh, so we've had the limoncello meringue and uh, Rocky Road uh, tubs. So you've got the two different flavour options. And then last week we added chocolate and Cointreau with Terry's chocolate orange. Uh, and that proved very, very popular. Uh, so much so that I've made some more uh, orange curd um, and we've left it up there over this weekend. Um, there won't, there's not masses and masses of the curd. So once that uh, stock levels have uh, gone down, um, then that will be taken off and then we're going to add another flavour. Um, we've got biscuits, we've got marshmallows going back on at the week, uh, this weekend. We're making marshmallows like crazy because you lot have gone marshmallow mad. Um, what else have we got? 
Can't think. You're Brain's gone dead. I'm recipe. finishing off the recipe book. I really am. I promise you, it's not just sat there. I have Mr. Boozy Baker's going to test that he's seen me sitting up late at night when he's uh, been mopping the floor in the kitchen and literally mopping it around me as I'm sat there at about 11 o'clock at night typing away. Uh, so it is nearly complete. It's just because we keep doing more. Re I want to give you value for money, so I want to put as many of the recipes in as I can. Uh, Sarah was doing this for her daughter Rose, who's nine, and is loving well it. Well so done. Thank you. We've got lots of thank yous. People really looking forward to uh, 2 p.m. on Saturday. So we've got Jean. Excellent. Says thank you. Tiff, who was her first time baking along, she'll be back. Oh, brilliant. Excellent. Tell everyone about this and uh, get them, encourage them to bake, and then you can. You can uh, swap photos, or maybe if you're neighbours, you could leave a, a slice of uh, each other's cakes to do a bit of a, a competition, and maybe get a third neighbour to judge. Uh, but yeah, um, have fun with this, um, and uh, we hope more people get involved. We've, we have got a good audience, and I know we've got other people that are from overseas joining us. We even posted out, um, and we will look at this on the shop, but we've actually started posting a couple of things out uh, over to, well, I don't want to say which countries, just in case it's a surprise. But we have <laughs> posted out to other countries this week. Um, so I will look at changing, that was a special request, uh, but we will look at changing our shop around to see uh, how we can put on delivery for further afield. Um, so we will look at that. Um, I just need Mr. Boozy Bakers to sit down with me and look at postage. It, it, it will work with items which have a longer shelf life. That's our main concerns. Yeah. It takes a few days to get Yeah, the anything that's got a good shelf life on it, um, we will alter so that it can be sent further afield. And especially with things like our aprons, it's not it's not a problem at all. Uh, Mary's asked, is orange curd easy to make? If you go back and look at our lemon curd one, you'll see that it's pretty much yeah. identical. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and I might, if I've got the time, it might not be uh, in the near future, but I might do a solely lemon curd uh, workshop just for YouTube. Um, but yeah, if you if you go to, it's on Facebook at the moment, we will put it onto YouTube. The Lemon Meringue Pie Workshop will show you how to make a curd. Um, Anne is, I think it was Anne, yeah, Anne is missing us next week, but we'll be back for shortbread. Again, all our videos will be posted. Next week is shortbread. Next week is shortbread. Next, yeah. next week's shortbread, Sorry. and then it's uh, the bread good. making right. um, the following oh, week. Normally. It's all right. <laughs> Even so, if you are missing it next week, please look for it on YouTube or uh, we will post it back onto Facebook. Please subscribe to YouTube. We will be adding other things to it as well as what we're doing here on Facebook. Yeah, it's, we've found that actually adding them all to YouTube, it makes it really easy for you guys to go back and find, especially if you want to make things again. We've been making the pizzas again this week. Um, and, and if you have it all in one place, then you can easily find all our different workshops. Will we be making olive bread kits? Uh, yes, we can make olive bread kits. We've got two weeks, haven't we? So um, I might give that task uh, to the multi-talented man uh, behind the camera um, to price up and put on line. Uh, so yes, we can do that. So I didn't want to do that one next week because I'm, I am aware that it's using bread flour and yeast. So uh, yeah, we can get that to you. I'll get working on that this evening. There you go. He's <laughs> promised. You heard it here live. He's going to work on that. Are we all good? We lots of thank yous to Kate Smith and Delicious. Sarah oh, I agree. enjoyed it. It was her first time with us. So, yeah. Excellent. Right, well, I'm going to leave you to it. Um, but as I said, with your cakes, if you, I mean, we've got another 17 minutes on ours, but when they get to the time that the, the, it's beeping, it should smell done. Um, get a skewer, press it in, like poke it in. If it comes out and it's wet, put it in for another five minutes. If it comes out and it is... Um, there's nothing on it, um, then use your fingers, press, I've got orange fingers, um, press down uh, on top of your sponge, if, just lightly. Uh, if it springs back up, it's done. If it sinks, quickly put it back in and give it another five minutes and then repeat that until you're confident that you've got um, a sponge that is uh, thoroughly cooked and then take it out and leave it in the tin to cool. Do let it cool fully before you add the cream. Yeah, if you if you add it if you add it warm, you're <laughs> gonna need a fork and you need to ask, uh, you're gonna have to eat fast. Oh dear, uh, it will still be yummy, but you do need it to cool if you want to sit for it to sit and uh, and not just congeal. Uh, so we'll leave you with that. Uh, as I said, last I, question they've asked: Where's Max and Aaron? Um, 
They're, I don't know. <laughs> I would imagine we they're probably watching. <laughs> I would imagine they're chilling out. Um, Erin started a new school this week. Um, so she looks shattered uh, because uh, as anyone with kids at home at the moment, they have been very used to not going very far. Um, and she literally has dark rings under her eyes where she is so tired from like full on school for three days. Um, so they're just chilling out. I think Max might be up in his room tidying it. And I think Erin's chilling out with YouTube or something. You so, uh, Max is back for bread, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I imagine Max will definitely be back for olive bread. Whether the bread actually ends up with any olives in it is debatable. <laughs> and Erin loves pancakes. So I'd imagine she will be back for that one. Um, so I'm sorry. It's just me today, uh, but, uh, but they will be back soon. And, and sorry, Laura, they're not eating marshmallows because all our marshmallows have booze in them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they have made their own marshmallows actually but um but yeah no they're all boozy so the raspberry and the prosecco ones uh for anyone that's asking because they were literally sold out within seconds they are literally setting and they will be available from monday um and we're going to make uh amaretto and cherry next and then i might if i get time have a play around with a new flavor uh, so I will leave you there. Thank you ever so much for taking part. Send us your photos. Tell us if we're okay to use them in our cookery book. That would be amazing. Um, and we will see you next week for shortbread making. Thank you very much, guys. <laughs>